Hi folks, Steve from G.I. Joburg here, bringing you another obscure little oddity that everyone might have forgotten. <laughs> this is a G.I. Joe vehicle action pack, nay, a Cobra vehicle action pack, the Cobra Rocket Sled. This happens to be, as you see, on an Action Force card, so it's a European release. These are pretty commonplace down here in sunny South Africa. And this particular action pack, it's the Cobra Rocket Sled. It was the biggest peg warmer of a series of peg warmers. The accessory packs and vehicle action packs were figureless carded toys. So you didn't get a whole lot of value for your buck. Yes, they came in at a lower price point than the action figures themselves, but without an action figure to complete it, this was just a pull back and go oddity that you could do very little with. So the assumption was you already had some figures. If you didn't have figures and this wound up under your Christmas tree, well, you know, a look of consternation to your parents or whoever gave it to you uh, was not exactly out of place. Hmm. So we see some lovely card art which uh, was repeated for the rocket sled or the heli pack and we see the Astro Viper doing anything but uh, moonwalk or spacewalk. He's flying his little copter and uh, Voltar, Destro's general, is scooting along the desert floor on his red suicide mobile. <laughs> Is that a look of grit and determination or stark terror? <laughs> you decide. If we take a look at the back, we have the Astro Viper repeated, and this time it's the Toxo Viper looking rather ridiculous on top of his rocket sled. And here she is, free of her plastic prison, the Cobra rocket sled. Dinky little thing, isn't it? You also, of course, get a little sticker sheet. Always makes uh, a very simple purchase that much more premium to have decals to put on. Cobra symbols, you know? A little bit of detail goes a long way. And, of course, you've got the mandatory instructions, which further remind you that this is indeed a vintage G.I. Joe toy. They just don't make them like this anymore. It shows you exactly what to do with your Toxoviper. Yep, that definitely is a hazardous environment trooper, because he's about to strap this thing to his back and go rocketing off into the sunset. Frightening. On the back we have the label application instructions. Very handy. So let's get some labels on this sucker. With the sticker application out of the way, I have the following insights to share. Uh, firstly, not terribly difficult or challenging, even in spite of the small size of the vehicle, she uh, was a dream with most of the decals fitting the surfaces quite handsomely. The only problems were these danger uh, hot exhaust symbols which were going off the edge slightly and I hate it when the, the stickers uh, go over these panel lines. So I decided to trim them slightly so that they would fit uh, just the rear rudder. I suppose that's a rudder. It's the only control surface on this sled. Um, as I said before, Cobra symbols can do no wrong. This distinctive Cobra lettering style is beautiful. I've always been a fan of it. And uh, over here, we have what should be perhaps an instrument panel, but instead it's a warning for the um, operator, followed by lines of text, which Hasbro have a shorthand of just doing uh, black horizontal lines. But one can imagine that uh, the instructions read as follows. Warning, you are sitting atop a fiery death trap. Good luck. <laughs> uh, a few notable things. I mean, this is a peg warmer for two reasons. It's not a very exciting addition to your collection because it doesn't come with a figure. Uh, and also, this is probably the most simplistic looking of all of the vehicle packs. But, it does have a few intriguing elements. One, this 
clear plastic tip which looks like it contains a mace. It's a bobbly battering ram almost. It reminds me of something you might see in a Masters of the Universe setting or uh, perhaps even Brave Star. Uh, I remember they rode um, sort of jet bikes that had similar horns, if you will, that operated like the steering column. I hope I'm remembering that correctly. Anyway, for armament, we've got two laser cannons, I suppose they are, uh, on these nacelles, which, you know, they might pack a punch, give this thing some uh, firepower. Another feature that I'd like to draw your attention to, and something that would have been very easily overlooked if you just saw it on card and never actually purchased it. Yes, it's got a pull back and go feature. Goodbye. <laughs> but, a little hidden function is that the turbine at the back spins. And, um, mm, not quite accurate to the way a rocket uh, propulsion operates, but it's very cool inclusion. And just lets us know that Hasbro was not dialing this in. They actually did have some design panache when they cooked up the Cobra rocket sled. Now, to convert it into backpack mode, all you do is that. So that is not design panache. This is a very, very basic toy. But, let's see what happens when we add a figure into the mix. I decided to give Voltar the day off, and instead went with the figure that the instructions and the back photography of the card suggests, that being our hazardous environment trooper, the Toxo Viper. Now, Toxo Viper can, of course, wear this very fashionable item on his back. It is quite a snug fit. Um, I imagine these backpack these backpacks often saw a lot of damage in that their pegs snapped off because it's it's in there tight so you know you're not going to get it to seat any deeper and as such it would put strain on the back peg but that's basically it folks i mean he could i suppose wear it like this and maybe you'd be able to successfully you'd be able to conceivably play with him <laughs> blasting off. Um, but the intention is for him to ride it, uh, lying prone, as uh, you would with a Zartan Swamp Skier, um, the 25th anniversary version, which is also laughably small. Uh, these handholds are a little thick and unfortunately square, so you're going to battle to get um, a figure with rather minty hands to hold them. So I'm just going to mock hold them for now. I'm afraid folks that's about as good as it's gonna get. And I'm sure you'll agree with me, it's downright suicidal. <laughs> now these guys had their starring role in a video game actually. The Nintendo G.I. Joe game by Taxan. Um, which featured these guys flying at you from right to left on the screen and firing a trio of what I suppose I could only call fireballs. Um, they were rather difficult to evade. Uh, and let me drop in a screen cap of the sprite itself. Yeah, I'm sure you'll agree. It's that to a T. Nice bit of exposure for an otherwise underutilized toy. But then again, something like this perhaps is best left forgotten. What the hell do you do with it? I think it makes a far more suitable aqua sled. You can just imagine some Hydra Vipers diving down to their target, uh, riding atop these things. And that does look a hell of a lot more like a propeller than a rocket engine. Hmm. I mean, that should be in the intake end not where the jet exhaust fires out of. But anyway... Right now, folks, I think it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. If you know G.I. Joe Berg's channel, you'll know that we've already put out a review of the G.I. Joe ATV. And now it's time to find out which of these two motorized action packs is the quickest.
It's been more than 20 years. But the friction powered motors inside these guys are fresh like spring chickens. So without further ado, let's find a smooth surface and race these suckers. Crotch shot, awkward. Here we go, gentlemen. Start your engines. <clears throat> let's try that again. A tiled surface, perhaps, for our drag race. All right, gentlemen, on your marks. Get set. Go! Oh, dear goodness me. It seems like our friend, Mr. Cobra, has a problem spinning out. Yeah. These guys are not quite as good as uh, the G.I. Joe ATV's balloon tires. The other culprit, of course, these teensy tiny little wheels. Yeah, they will catch in every little nook. I mean, as you saw with the drag race demonstration, they couldn't quite negotiate the gaps in the grouting of the tiles. So, hmm, the G.I. Joe vehicle is most certainly superior on all terrain. But that's why it's called the ATV. I bet it can't fly. Or shoot fireballs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think this thing's primary function, to be honest, is a rocket pack for outer space. Oh yeah. Sick. Yep, all in all, a fun little oddity. I wouldn't go out of my way to get it, but if you happen to like maroon, uh, this will look very nice next to your imp or, uh, I don't know, the sea sleds that come with the bug or your moray. Hmm, put together a nice little maroon corre correction? Collection. <laughs> English. <laughs>